What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we're gonna to be talking about some fun facts on one of the most popular guns in the United States, the Sig Sauer P320. We're also gonna be including the M17 and the M18, which are the military designations of the 320, and we're gonna be talking about a whole lot of variants, some cool things, and certainly some trivia that you probably won't know about the P320. Now, if you're interested in that, stick around, but first, we're gonna thank the sponsor of this video, Brownells. I wanna thank Brownells for sending me not only one of these 320s, but two of them for this video, so we really appreciate those guys. Thanks, Cody. We always appreciate you. We love working with Iowa companies, so go check out Brownells. Now, it just happens to be the 10th anniversary of the 320. It was introduced in 2014 and adopted by the US military in 2017, so I figured it'd be a good time to talk about some trivia. Now, if you're unfamiliar, uh, the M17 went up against a lot of firearms in the military trials, including the Glock 19X, which was the one of the finalists along with the 320. Now, the 320 did win because, at least that I'm aware, they sold them at cost, and on top of that, Glock managed to not make a modular gun for the modular handgun contract. Literally had one job and you fucked that up. Now, as you can tell, the SIG 320 won the contract and that's because it is one of, if not the most, modular handgun on the market. Using the fire control unit, you can swap almost any part with easy, with no paperwork. You can get new slides, new grips, and unlike most pistols, like I said before, the grip itself is not the serialized part. It's actually the fire control unit inside it. And I actually have one apart so you can see it right here quite the revolutionary buzz in the gun world 10 years ago. A little bit more mainstream now, but SIG probably still does it the best, and they did it the first, at least the first popular one. Number two, there are currently over 40 variations of the 320, making it one of the most diverse pistols you can buy if you're looking for a small one, a medium one, a big one, or if you wanna buy just one and have a whole bunch of grips and slides, you can definitely do that. Something that you might not know that you can do with the fire control unit is you can actually drop it in chassis systems as well, not just grips, and on top of that, you can drop it in aftermarket grips. You don't have to just get them from SIG, so you can get cool stippling and different grip angles, which is pretty neat. Also, the uh, 320 fire control unit can be bought separately, and then you can just piece it together like Legos. I played with Legos when I was a kid, and technically I still do. Now, one of the coolest things you can do for sure is drop it into a chassis, and instead of a handgun, you can actually have a PCC, which is kind of cool. Well, a pistol caliber pistol anyway. Now, along with having the fire control unit, they actually started a trend, and many other companies are doing it now, including Beretta with the APX line. At number three, it is actually modeled after the P250, but is striker fired instead of double action. And what that means is it actually does have a relatively unique grip and bore axis compared to a lot of striker fired guns. It's traditionally a lot higher than something like a Glock or even an M&P because it was modeled after the P250. So you can see here it is a striker fired gun, but it does have the bore axis of a double action gun, which has a tendency to give it more muzzle flip than normal pistols. Number four, as I mentioned, other companies have been using the fire control unit as well, and although SIG released theirs first, they actually didn't create it first, at least it's up to speculation. As a matter of fact, Steyr has actually filed a lawsuit against SIG for patent infringement on their chassis system, although they did lose in court, so who's to say? Now number five is pretty interesting. We're gonna talk about the controversy of the SIGs firing themselves. Now, in 2023, an investigation by the Washington Post Washington Post, so take that with a grain of salt, found that over 100 people said their 320 discharged with no trigger pressure and at least 80 of them were wounded. At least 35 of the shootings have occurred with post-2017 P320s after the update, which we'll talk about in a minute. That update was intended to address the drop firing problem. In April of 2023, six American law enforcement agencies actually discontinued the use of the firearm due to these concerns. So I'll be interested to see in the courses of history who's actually right. Now, unlike a lot of striker fired pistols, the 320 does not have a trigger safety, which I've always considered this to be a part of it. However, this also could be just negligent use by the people themselves trying to cover up bad gun handling by blaming SIG. Alternatively, this could also be SIG trying to cover up negligent discharges <laughs> by blaming the people for bad gun handling. Both of them have invested interests in winning either side, and I'm honestly not sure who it is. 
Now I've never been a big fan of striker fired pistols without trigger safety, so I personally don't use them. But let me know in the comment section what you think is the right answer for the SIG 320. Do you think it's safe enough to carry, or do you maybe carry it on three o'clock because you're worried about blowing off your dick? If you actually have a 320 purchased pre-August 2017, SIG is actually doing a voluntary upgrade program where you can send your pistol in to get it updated, including changes to the physical weight of the trigger, the sear, the striker, and adding an additional mechanical disconnector to help mitigate the issues that I guess aren't happening. <laughs> Number seven. Now most people think of the 320 as the M17 or M18, the US military's fighting pistol. So they kind of think of the Sig Sauer P320 as a military handgun, but it's actually used in law enforcement all over the country, but not just in our country, around the world. It's also used in places like the UK, Austria, Bolivia, Brazil, Canada, Costa Rica, Denmark, France, Indonesia, Mexico, and all the way in the Ukraine. I wonder how they got those. Number eight. As a little trivia from my channel, it is the most tested firearm we've ever had. As a matter of fact, we've had more variants of the 320 than any other handgun on our channel, and I think we have over a dozen thousand round reviews on SIG 320s, so I know a little bit about them. As a matter of fact, maybe a little bit more than the average person commenting saying that they've never had a failure. In all fairness, you can't have a failure if you don't shoot it. Now, one of the interesting thing about testing so many SIG 320s is that you do get to appreciate just the sheer diversity and variety that the 320 has. Now, I'm knocking it for reliability a little bit, but don't get me wrong, it's a super cool design. I mean, if you consider the fact that all of these are 320s I have in front of me, this tan guy right here, the M18 uh, that the US military uses, and it actually has the manual safety, which is cool. I have an aftermarket variant here with a fire control unit with different slides and, and barrels that I use to configure any way I like. I have a suppressor version here with the Legion lower, which is actually pretty unique, the tungsten infused lower. We have suppressor height sights, we have an optics mount, and we have a threaded barrel right out of the factory, very cool. And we even have the new SIG 320 Max, which is their competition edition, with again the heavy lower with no iron sights at all. This one's actually used by Max Michelle, uh, the team captain of SIG, and one of the best shooters in the world. So if you want to get into the 320 game, I trust me, there's a lot of ones you can choose from, and it, that's honestly pretty cool. Now number nine is something we touched on a second ago, but I wanted to talk a little bit about the tungsten infused frame, which initially I was super excited about. That's actually really cool, having a polymer frame infused with tungsten dust, I believe is how they do it, and they're able to have a grip that actually does flex a little bit and can be dremeled on and things like that, but it still has the weight of a steel frame. So all the pros of a steel frame with none of the cons and all the pros of a polymer frame with none of the cons. So it's heavier, so it absorbs more recoil, and it has that flex. Now, if you have this high of war axis, you're gonna to need to create something like that, but it does work very well, and it did make the Legion series, at least at one time, one of the most popular competition guns on the market, which is a huge success. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm a huge Glock guy, but honestly, that's more innovation than Glock has had in 25 years, so it's impressive whether you like it or not. And number 10, a fact that a lot of people are not gonna like, but I gotta say it. The SIG 320 is also the least reliable popular handgun we've ever had on the channel. And since I've had 12 to 15,000 rounds through them to actually figure it out, I don't really know what it is because we have varying degrees of reliability issues. Every single 320 I've had has had a couple bobbles here or there, and I'm not really sure why. Maybe it's how I run them, maybe it's the ammunition I use, but the facts are facts. We've used a whole bunch of different ammunitions, we've used all kinds of different mags with, again, dozens of variants, and we experience similar failures in most of the guns. People always call me a SIG hater. That's actually kind of hilarious, because I own like 10 versions of the, the P365, which I recommend all the time, which also has a fire control unit. And on top of that, one of my favorite guns of all time is the SIG P226. Uh, you guys know I absolutely love that gun, and I have glowing reviews of many other SIGs on my channel as well. I just try to bring you facts and maybe a little sass and humor as well, but facts are facts and the 320 is good, it just isn't great. Now it's fun to shoot and I absolutely would recommend it for self-defense, although I wouldn't recommend it over a lot of other popular brands. Is it better than a high point? Yep. Is it better than a Stoger? Absolutely. But is it better than a Walter PDP, which comes out for around the same price with a better trigger? I don't really think so. But again, personal preference, it's up to you. You let me know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below how many of these you guys actually knew, and if you actually like the 320, if you dislike it, or whether or not you think the reliability or 
the drop fire issues are six problem or it's a misuse by the user. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later. Some sass going on. Well, it's a 320 video. If you're not sassy, people aren't even going to believe I'm doing it. <laughs>